Can you hear me all right? I can hear you great. Hello, Sweet. Isaac. Hi, it's great to talk to you for the first time. Yeah, it is great to talk with you. What? Uh, how are you doing today? Um, pretty good. My uh, roommates are getting married, so I just got done cleaning the house for them, and uh, I had a couple minutes. I oh, I'm excited. I was able to fit into my schedule. To come on. Yeah, I, I wanted to get to you first just to make sure that you could uh, could make make say everything you wanted to say. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm trans. I'm sorry. I'm listening. I keep seeing you on this stream, and it's distracting me. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you can mute the stream or, or minimize it. Yep, I got helps. that here. Yeah. Um, so I'm transgender. Um, I uh, And I have been dealing with mental health issues my entire life. Um, I was first hospitalized for suicide attempt when I was 15. And I've been in and out of the hospital pretty much every year since then. Um, uh, I also have worked as a, a uh, pharmacy technician um, and have had some experience um, trying to get bills paid for for clients um, a, as a retail uh, pharmacy assistant, basically. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your, your medical struggles, but um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's hard out there for trans people, especially uh, in the current healthcare system. Oh yeah, it is. Um, I am very lucky to live near a university where I'm able to get treatment from people who are very qualified. Um, but with the current system, that's just totally luck. Like, um, I, I know people who live in the same state, a couple cities over, who have very, very limited access to doctors who could prescribe them hormones. Um, there's basically two cities um, or at least when I was first trying to find um, trans health care, um, I could go to, I live in Iowa, um, I could go to Iowa City or I could go to Des Moines for treatment, um, which our state, it's not, it's pretty big. I mean, that, that, that's a very, uh, that really limits you. There's no public transit between cities in mm -hmm. the Midwest. So, um, and I have just been totally uh, not only crippled by uh, my mental health struggles, which are bipolar 2 and PTSD, um, which uh, bipolar disorder um, 2, uh, it's a little different from the typical bipolar disorder people know, where you switch between states of depression and um, high states of activity called mania. Mm -hmm. um, with bipolar 2, um, you have very long, deep, depressive episodes for, like, in my case, most of the year, um, with sub several hypomanic states, um, which usually last a couple weeks each um, throughout the year, which are like mania but less. I'm not, I have a lot of the same energy mm -hmm. and um, urges, but basically the line is I don't um, develop delusions or um, see anything I'm not supposed to. So I'm only functional to work parts of the year, basically. Um, and um, PTSD and trauma just, of course, adds to that uh, and makes it uh, easier for uh, symptoms to get triggered by um, yeah. stressful events including things like work um and the kind of hole that i feel like i'm stuck in right now um because of the american system i'm lucky enough to be on medicaid which in my state is pretty good it covers pretty much everything i need um and i have some healthcare providers who are savvy enough with the system to get stuff covered uh even if it initially it is not supposed to um which kind of leads me into my experience as a pharmacy technician yeah i was um, just gonna just gonna ask um how that kind of all wraps together because i imagine it does yeah um the system is nonsensically complicated on pretty much every level and the 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 whole um 
business being built around a profit motive is uh, not just bad for patients, but it's inefficient for the whole healthcare system as it's built. There are so many gaps. Your pharmacist, in my experience, um, but doctors have this problem too, have mm -hmm. to spend so much time dealing with insurance and trying to get things covered. Um, and um, so here's a situation we would deal with as technicians a lot. Yeah. Um, so your doctor, um, you come in with heart trouble and they want to prescribe you this medication to deal with that heart problem. Um, but it's a newer medication, so it's only a brand name. There is no generic for this medication. Well, tough shit. <laughs> um, your insurance, it's not on your formulary because the formularies are usually kind of behind okay. um, as far as new medication because they have deals with pharmaceutical companies to not cover um, new brand name medication because they want people to pay out of pocket for it. Um, Great. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the thing. There's uh, what I considered my job as a retail technician. Um, basically, I was just like a cashier, just dealing with billing, um, explaining to patients how to use their medication, mm -hmm. and also adding a kind of uh, watchful eye on top of the pharmacists and other technicians to make sure mistakes didn't slip through the cracks. Um, which in pharmacy is like the main deal. <laughs> right. So, um, sorry, uh, I just need a second. Oh, it's okay. Um, can you explain to me where we were just a second ago? I'm sorry. Oh, you were talking about uh, your role as a uh, technician, making sure people don't fall through mm -hmm. the, the gaps. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm there to make sure every, uh, my pharmacist didn't like this, but I was there to make sure that every person got what they needed for as cheap as they could. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I mean, I'm on Medicaid, the government pays for my medication. I'm not going to gatekeep this for anybody else. I know what it's like to try to get things covered with, um, insurance. Uh, what some people outside the United States might not be familiar with is the concept of, um, deductibles. So um, with some usually cheaper insurance, um, there is a certain amount of money you need to pay in for your own health care before your insurance company will cover any of the cost of your health care. And this right. is, of course, on top of paying premiums and co-pays for whatever they do cover before you hit their deductible, which is usually a very limited bare bones stuff it doesn't really cover what people need it to um and deductibles can be as low as 500 dollars, but more commonly around one to two thousand dollars per person on a plan so when i was growing up and i was on my dad's insurance through his work um that meant for every for me and my three brothers we would have to pay in $6,000 before my medication was covered by my insurance. Wow. Uh, yeah. So it's insane. It, it doesn't make any sense. You, um, you can't get medication without going through a pharmacy unless you live close to a border of another country, which is good. Uh, I don't like people who feel like the, the answer to this question is deregulating the pharmaceutical industry because absolutely you, not <laughs> um if you want to see an industry that's worse than the pharmaceutical industry look no further than alternative health it's the same thing but without the government regulation um and of course that was frustrating too watching people who they can't afford real treatment so they go to these flim flam men Mm -hmm. or try supplements that aren't well studied or don't work at all or um, there's no way to know if the supplement in the bottle is what it's labeled to be mm -hmm. um and um 
it feeds into that other system because people just can't get what they need from the actual valid um the place place should be people should be getting health care from doctors obviously right, right. not from um, companies and we make that so hard and uh if you go into any pharmacy you will see um notebooks and pens and all sorts of stuff donated to the pharmacy from pharmaceutical companies to advertise directly to the pharmacists um about what medications they should be um supplying and i was really lucky to work with a really good team of pharmacists but not everybody is and some people will just try to prescribe what gets them paid that's mm -hmm. what happened with the opiate crisis it's just so frustrating like it's this one it's really one problem like the profit motive here um if we could socialize this medics medicine it would <laughs> it yeah. wouldn't be such a huge problem like it it's like a cancer it has corrupted every layer of our healthcare industry which should be where our society goes to be healed and taken care of and um to be born and to literally die like um why are we making this harder for everybody for because i like because the people who make the money are the ones paying for it to stay that way I guess. yeah and i mean you you said something at the very beginning about it being all nonsensical but it it does make sense for it to be uh complicated right mm -hmm. if if they... your, if your motivation is to make a profit because by making mm -hmm. it so complicated it makes it really hard to see all the different pieces that are being used to make that money you mm -hmm. know and um another example of how like socializing the industry would do so much to curb uh, medical mistakes um which are a huge killer of people in the medical industry there there's all mistakes are always going to happen in medicine but the way we build the system like if if people are dying for no reason they shouldn't be dying for no reason right um, i think but, i think everyone should be able to agree on that right <laughs> right um so a pharmacy gets their medication from a supplier um right um who and they're the ones they're like the middlemen for the pharmacy mm -hmm. and um they are the ones that actually go and buy the product from the pharmaceutical company and negotiate those prices so that they can then sell the literally directly sell the medication to the pharmacy um all the farm all the medication in the pharmacy has been bought by that pharmacy to be sold at that pharmacy by the pharmacist um which is a problem when uh your company's supply line is disrupted somehow right um last year in iowa we had a big uh thunderstorm it was called a derecho that destroyed my entire city basically um <laughs> uh we had the powers out for weeks that fucks up the storage for medications um and uh roads were completely impassable um so supply lines weren't stuff wasn't coming in our main supply warehouse um had to be shut down because the roof had been taken off oh my um <laughs> yeah uh and if you have a contract with one supplier you can't just go to a different supplier and get that medication so what pharmacies end up doing is they create little markets locally the pharmacies where they buy to, buy and trade medications from each other depending on how much they need um and it just uh, you I, I was working in that system and it drives you so insane because if it was just one system and the medication was made um publicly mm -hmm. uh 
we wouldn't have all of these roadblocks that prevent us from getting things that people literally need to survive. Yeah. Um, or at the very least affects their quality of life. Well, and the, the profit... Demonstrably. Yeah, the, the, and the profit motive to, like, push certain drugs... Um, oh, yeah. It is... It's evil. Is, it is evil. Like, that. that's what directly caused the entire opioid crisis in America, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we don't, we didn't have to, uh, push, uh, opioids, but we did because there was the profit motive for the companies involved. Right. Um, right. And it's, I don't understand how people don't work, understand because it's literally all, always been this way. I have a pet, um, fascination with medical history. Um, and if you, if you look back, the best medical systems have always been ones where they were collectivized and when you have people if you're just letting people run around willy-nilly um collecting profit for medical care shit gets bonkers really quick i mean before the opiate crisis they were literally selling heroin and coffee cough syrup yeah um (laughs) (laughs) um the also uh an interesting to thing to research um uh related would be how how all these opiates are are being got from the middle east and how that affects our um uh want to stay there and and prevent uh uh workers and poppy poppy farms from uh being able to make money from um doing that to collect the opium that we use for all these medications yeah, um, it, it's it's interconnected so much with lobbying and mm-hmm. policy, both both foreign and domestic, and mm-hmm. it, it it gets really complicated really fast. But the bottom line is, um, it and, seems to be what you're saying is that we need to take the profit motive out of this equation. Yeah, the I think the Orphan Drug Act was one of the best things they ever they ever did in pharmacy. Um, Farm, the history of pharmacy is full of uh, very bad decisions um, on the behalf on the behalf of our legislators. And and what is the um, Orphan Drug Act? The Orphan Drug Act. Uh, I can't remember the year off the top of my head. My teacher would be so disappointed in me. But um, the Orphan Drug Act was created um, kind of during and after the AIDS crisis because pharmaceutical Um, an orphan drug is a drug made for somebody for a condition that only affects a small number of people. So there isn't really a profit motive to make the drug. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, uh, because so few people are going to use it that what's the point or in the case of HIV, um, the people who are going to use it are people we don't like. So, right. you know. Um, now, uh, it kind of works how into the whole system of brand name drugs and generic drugs, which is horrible. Um, but um, it it kind of allowed uh, um I don't like this aspect of it, but it shows that regulation in healthcare is what we need because this wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have these drugs otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, we basically had to force the pharmaceutical companies with profit, with more money to um, make these drugs for people. Um, I'm sorry. I, I've kind of lost my my thing. I'm sorry. No, no it's okay. <laughs> you, I, uh, I, I was just asking about the Orphan Drug Act, and you, you walked mm-hmm. us through that, I think, very well. Um, yeah. Um, it could be so much better. We we put so much money into our healthcare, and that money could be going into research, um, into creating more efficient medical products, the, the medical device industry is horrible too. Um, they separate um, um, medical devices and medications. So they have to be sold at different stores with different types of insurance. 
Right. So if you you uh, um, your insurance might pay for after you broke both your legs after your deductible premiums and copays, but um, they might they're probably not going to pay for your wheelchair. Um, and and a lot of this is kind of again purposely split up so that mm -hmm. people who don't directly bump up against these systems have no knowledge of that right like a lot of people They're... a lot of people who especially younger people don't have any idea of how like medical device systems uh work when it related to like health insurance they would just assume that it's covered regard like yeah i pay insurance They're... i the you know. healthcare industry has gotten so complicated that there is an industry in helping people understand it, and then they lobby to make it more complicated so that it stays that way. Yeah. Um, so, um, as somebody who's seen the kind of industry from the inside at least a little bit, Medicare for All, I, I have to say, will uh, really affect a lot of people in healthcare and um, people are going to lose their jobs because there won't be uh, a reason for those jobs. But that does not justify what we're doing to people. Right. Um, it, I would be happy to not be a technician because my job isn't as in demand um, and find another way to make the industry work for everybody. Yeah. Um, it's it's ridiculous <laughs> um and uh well and the whole point of and, and and any any like medicare for all plan like even even bernie sanders uh medicare for all plan includes like transition costs for people who mm -hmm. completely lose their jobs uh and it includes oh, yeah. uh ways of pulling uh employees into the system so it's not even like mm -hmm such a like a, a move to covering everyone would even entail like mm -hmm. a massive you know massive unemployment from people who were formerly in the uh in the industry yeah no and they they don't pay us anything um we're in the exact same way a wage rent situation as everybody else um what as you, a pharmacy what do you mean by that um as a pharmacy technician i get paid 11 dollars an hour um, I can't work full time because I would lose my Medicaid to take care of my medical that, bills. That and that seems <laughs> criminal to me. I'm I'm sorry. Like your job, it is. your job is literally I, helping to keep people alive, and you can't you can't quit it. Otherwise, you could die. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm not working right now. Um, my health took a downturn. Uh, in the middle of the COVID uh, crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, since then I've been trying to get on SSI, uh, which I won't go into because that'll just make me angry and I could rant about it for hours. Um, it, I mean, it's kind of an extension of the same issue, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just trying to scrape by on food stamps and thank, thank God I don't have to worry about my medical stuff. Except for when I do, because they send me something and I don't get it in on time. They, the the turnaround for when you have to have paperwork in is very short, and that's kind of difficult if you have issues with executive functioning. Um, if you're disabled, that you need to have paperwork in a day after you get it in the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, my coverage lapses all the time. I've had to stop and start testosterone about four times on the public system uh, because of lapses in my coverage. I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> uh, thankfully, testosterone, it's pretty uh, powerful stuff. So it's not like I had to detransition de or anything, but I know it's a concern for other people. Um, I actually have to get going. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, sharing sharing your experiences. I really do appreciate yeah. it, and I think everyone else does too. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, give Samus a head pat for me? I will. Thank you. She's currently Have not great... here, but I will. I will as okay. soon as I can. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> Goodbye. Good luck with the wedding. Thank you.
a wonderful, wonderful conversation there with uh, Isaac and Animate, a member of the community. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, Punky Gal, uh, you're going to probably have to wait because I, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you have a lot you want to talk about, and I, we probably can't condense that into the next eight minutes. Um, Distron, I said good luck with the wedding. Um, Isaac and Animate is going to a wedding. I, I think I think their roommates are are getting married. Something like that. Yeah. Um, hello, Zodiac Gaming Channel. So for those of you who are just joining in, uh, just a reminder at the top of the hour that... Uh, oh, good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being very accommodating, Punky Gal. Um, for those of you just joining, uh, we are doing a organizing stream for Medicare for All. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. I really do appreciate it.